This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. L I B R I V O X dot O R G. Recording by Cherie Terrio. Anthem by Anne Ran. Chapter 6. We have not written for thirty days. For thirty days we have not been here in our tunnel. We had been caught. It happened on that night when we wrote last. We forgot that night. To watch the sand and the glass which tells us when three hours have passed and it's time to return to the city theater. When we remembered, the sand had run out. We hastened to the theater, but the big tent stood gray and silent against the sky. The streets of the city lay before us, dark and empty. If we went back to hide in our tunnel, we would be found and our light with us. So we walked to the home of the street sweepers. When the council of the home questioned us, we looked upon the faces of the council, but there was no curiosity in those faces, and no anger, and no mercy. So when the oldest of them asked, where have you been? We thought of our glass box and of our light, and we forgot all else. And we answered, We will not tell you. The oldest did not question us further. They turned to the two youngest and said, and their voice was bored, Take our brother Equality 2521 to the Palace of Corrective Detention. Lash them until they tell. So we were taken to the stone room under the palace of corrective detention. This room has no windows and it is empty save for an iron post. Two men stood by the post, naked for leather aprons and leather hoods over their faces. Those who had brought us departed, leaving us to the two judges who stood in a corner of the room. The judges were small, thin men, gray and bent. They gave the signal to the two strong, hooded ones. They tore our clothes from our body. They threw us down upon our knees, and they tied our hands to the iron post. The first blow of the lash felt as if our spine had been cut in two. The second blow stopped the first, and for a second we felt nothing. Then pain struck us in our throat and fire ran in our lungs without air, but we did not cry out. The lash whistled like a singing wind. We tried to count the blows, but we lost count. We knew that the blows were falling upon our back, only we felt nothing upon our back any longer. A flaming grill kept dancing before our eyes, and we thought of nothing save that grill, a grill, a grill of red squares, and then we knew that we were looking at the squares of the iron grill in the door, and there was also the squares of the stone on the walls, and the squares which the lash was cutting upon our back, crossing and recrossing itself in our flesh. Then we saw a fist before us. It knocked our chin up, and we saw the red froth of our mouth on the withered fingers, and the judge asked, Where have you been? But we jerked our head away, hid our face upon our tied hands, and bit our lips. The lash whistled again. We wondered who was sprinkling burning coal dust upon the floor, for we saw drops of red twinkling on the stones around us. Then we knew nothing, save two voices snarling steadily, one after the other, even though we knew that they were speaking many minutes apart. Where have you been? Where have you been? Where have you been? Where have you been? And our lips moved, but the sound trickled back in our throat, and the sound was only the light, the light, the light. Then we knew nothing. We opened our eyes, lying on our stomach on the brick floor of a cell. We looked upon two hands lying before us on the bricks, and we moved them, and we knew that they were our hands, but we could not move our body. Then we smiled, for we thought of the light, and that we had not betrayed it. 
We lay in our cell for many days. The door opened twice each day, once for the men who brought us bread and water, and once for the judges. Many judges came to our cell, first the humblest, and then the most honored judges of the city. They stood before us in their white togas, and they asked, Are you ready to speak? But we shook our head, lying before them on the floor, and they departed. We counted each day and each night as it passed. Then, tonight, we knew that we must escape, for tomorrow the World Council of Scholars is to meet in our city. It was easy to escape from the palace of corrective detention. The locks are old on the doors, and there are no guards about. There is no reason to have guards, for men have never defied the councils so far as to escape from whatever place they are ordered to be. Our body is healthy and strength returns to it speedily. We lunged against the door and it gave way. We stole through the dark passages and through the dark streets and down into our tunnel. We lit the candle and we saw that our place had not been found and nothing had been touched, and our glass box stood before us on the cold oven as we had left it. What matter they now, the scars upon our back? Tomorrow, in the full light of day, we shall take our box and leave our tunnel open and walk through the streets to the home of the scholars. We shall put before them the greatest gift ever offered to men. We shall tell them the truth. We shall hand to them as our confession these pages we have written. We shall join our hands to theirs. We shall work together with the power of the sky for the glory of mankind. Our blessing upon you, our brothers. Tomorrow you will take us back into your fold, and we shall be an outcast no longer. Tomorrow we shall be one of you again. Tomorrow. End of chapter 6 this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Cherie Terrio. Anthem by Anne Ran. Chapter 7. It is dark here in the forest. The leaves rustle over our head, black against the last gold of the sky. The moss is soft and warm. We shall sleep on this moss for many nights, till the beasts of the forest come to tear our body. We have no bed now, save the moss, and no future, save the beasts. We are old now, yet we were young this morning, when we carried our glass box through the streets of the city to the home of the scholars. No men stopped us, for there were none about the palace of corrective detention, and the others knew nothing. No men stopped us at the gate. We walked through the empty passages and into the great hall where the World Council of Scholars sat in solemn meeting. We saw nothing as we entered, save the sky and the great windows, blue and glowing. Then we saw the scholars, who sat around a long table. They were as shapeless clouds huddled at the rise of a great sky. There were the men whose famous names we knew and others from distant lands, whose names we had not heard. We saw a great painting on the wall over their heads, of the twenty illustrious men who had invented the candle. All the heads of the council turned to us as we entered. These great and wise of the earth did not know what to think of us. And they looked upon us with wonder and, and curiosity, as if we were a miracle. It is true that our tunic was torn and stained with brown stains, which had been blood. We raised our right arm, and we said, Our greeting to you, our honored brothers of the World Council of Scholars. Then Collective 00009, the oldest and wisest of the council, spoke and asked, Who are you, our brother? For you do not look like a scholar. Our name is Equality, 72521, we answered, and we are a street sweeper of this city. Then it was as if a great wind had struck in the hall, for all the scholars spoke at once, and they were angry and frightened. A street sweeper? A street sweeper walking in upon the World Council of Scholars? 
It is not to be believed. It is against all the rules and all the laws. But we knew how to stop them. Our brothers, we said, we matter not, nor our transgression. It is only our brother men who matter. Give no thought to us, for we are nothing. But listen to our words, for we bring you a gift such as has never been brought to men. Listen to us, for we hold the future of mankind in our hands. Then they listened. We placed our glass box on the table before them. We spoke of it and of our long quest and of our tunnel and of our escape from the palace of corrective detention. Not a hand moved in that hall as we spoke, nor an eye. Then we put the wires to the box, and they all bent forward and sat still, watching. And we stood still, our eyes upon the wire, and slowly, slowly as a flush of blood, a red flame trembled in the wire. Then the wire glowed. But terror struck the men of the council. They leaped to their feet. They ran from the table. They stood pressed against the wall, huddled together, seeking the warmth of one another's bodies to give them courage. We looked upon them and we laughed and said, Fear nothing, our brothers. There is a great power in these wires, but this power is tamed. It is yours. We give it to you. Still, they would not move. We give you the power of the sky, we cried. We give you the key to the earth. Take it and let us be one of you, the humblest among you. Let us work together and harness this power and make it ease the toil of men. Let us throw away our candles and our torches. Let us flood our cities with light. Let us bring a new light to men. But they looked upon us, and suddenly we were afraid, for their eyes were still and small and evil. Our brothers, we cried, have you nothing to say to us? Then Collective 00009 moved forward. They moved to the table, and the others followed. Yes, spoke Collective zero. Zero, 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 0009 we have much to say to you the sound of their voice brought silence to the hall and to the beat of our heart yes said collective zero, 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 0009 we have much to say to a wretch who have broken all the laws and who boast of their infamy how dared you think that your mind held greater wisdom than the minds of your brothers and if the council had agreed that you be a street sweeper, how dared you think that you could be of greater use to men than in sweeping the streets? How dared you, gutter cleaner, spoke fraternity 93452, to hold yourself as one alone and with, and with thoughts of one and not of many? You shall be burned at the stake, said democracy 46998. No, there shall be lashed, said unanimity. 73304, till there is nothing left under the lashes. No, said Collective zero, 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 0009. We cannot decide upon this, our brothers. No such crime has ever been committed, and it is not for us to judge, nor for any small council. We shall deliver this creature to the World Council itself, and let their will be done. We looked upon them, and we pleaded. Our brothers, you, you're right. Let the will of the council be done upon our body. We do not care. But the light? What will you do with the light? Collective zero, 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 0009 looked upon us, and they smiled. So you think you have found a new power? said Collective zero, 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 0009. Do you think all your brothers think that? No, we answered. What is not thought by all men cannot be true, said Collective zero, 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 0009. You have worked on this alone? asked International 15537. Yes, we answered. 
what is not done collectively cannot be good said international one five five three seven many men in the homes of the scholars have had strange new ideas in the past said solidarity eight one one six four but when the majority of their brother scholars voted against him they abandoned their ideas as all men must this box is useless said alliance six seven three four nine should it be what they claim of it said harmony nine two six four two then it would bring ruin to the department of candles the candle is a great boon to mankind as approved by all men therefore it cannot be destroyed uh, by the whim of one this would wreck the plans of the world council said unanimity two nine nine one three and without the plans of the world council the sun cannot rise it took fifty years to secure the approval of all the councils for the candle and to decide upon the number needed and to refit the plans so as to make the candles instead of the torches this touched upon thousands and thousands of men working in scores of states we cannot alter the plans again so soon and if this should lighten the toil of men said similarity five zero three zero six then it is a great evil for men have no cause to exist save in toiling for other men then collective zero 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 nine rose and pointed at her box this thing they said must be destroyed and all the others cried as one it must be destroyed then we leapt to the table we seized our box we shoved them aside and we ran to the window we turned and we looked at them for the last time and a rage such as is not fit for humans to know choked our voice in our throat you fools we cried you fools do you, you thrice damned fools we swung our fists through the window pane and we leapt out in a ringing rain of glass we fell but we never let the box fall from our hands then we ran we ran blindly and men and houses streaked past us in a torrent without shape and the road seemed not to be flat before us but as if it were leaping up to meet us and we waited for the earth to rise and strike us in the face but we ran we knew not where we were going we knew only that we must run run to the end of the world to the end of our days then we knew suddenly that we were lying on a soft earth and that we had stopped trees taller than we had ever seen before stood over us in a great silence then we knew we were in the uncharted forest we had not thought of coming here but our legs had carried our wisdom and our legs had brought us to the uncharted forest against our will our glass box lay beside us we crawled to it we fell upon it our face in our arms and we lay still we lay thus for a long time then we rose we took our box and walked on into the forest it mattered not where we went we knew that men would not follow us for they never entered the uncharted forest we had nothing to fear from them the forest disposes of its own victims this gave us no fear either only we wished to be away from the city and the air that touches upon the air of the city so we walked on our box in our arms our heart empty we are doomed whatever days are left to us we shall spend them alone and we have heard of the corruption to be found in solitude we have torn ourselves from the truth which is our brother men and there is no road back for us and no redemption we know these things but we do not care we care for nothing on earth we are tired only the glass box in our arms is like living heart that gives us strength we have lied to ourselves we have not built this box for the good of our brothers 
We built it for its own sake. It is above all our brothers to us. It is truth above their truth. Why wonder about this? We have not many days to live. We are walking to the fangs awaiting us somewhere among the great silent trees. There is not a thing behind us to regret. Then a blow of pain struck us, our first and our only. We thought of the golden one. We thought of the golden one whom we shall never see again. Then the pain passed. It is best. We are one of the damned. It is best if the golden one forget our name and the body which bore that name. End Chapter 7 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X dot org. Recording by Cherie Terrio. Anthem by Anne Ran. Chapter 8 It has been a day of wonder, this our first day in the forest. We awoke when a ray of sunlight fell across our face. We wanted to leap to our feet, as we have had to leap to our feet every morning of our life, but we remembered suddenly that no bell had rung and there was no bell to ring anywhere. We lay on our back, we threw our arms out, and we looked up at the sky. The leaves had edges of silver that trembled and rippled like a river of green and fire flowing high above us. We did not wish to move. We thought suddenly that we could lie thus as long as we wished, and we laughed loud at the thought. We could also rise or run or leap or fall down again. We were thinking that these were things without sense. But before we knew it, our body had risen in one leap, our arms stretched out of their own will, and our body whirled and whirled, till it raised a wind to rustle through the leaves of the bushes. Then our hands seized a branch and swung us high into a tree, with no aim save the wonder of learning the stretch of our body. The branch snapped under us, and we fell upon the moss that was soft as a cushion. Then our body, losing all sense, rolled over and over on the moss, dry leaves in our tunic, in our hair, in our face, and we heard suddenly that we were laughing, laughing aloud, laughing as if there were no power left in us save laughter. Then we took our glass box, and we went into the forest. We went on, cutting through the branches, and it was as if we were swimming through a sea of leaves, with the bushes as waves rising and falling and rising around us and flinging their green sprays high on the treetops. The trees parted before us, calling us forward. The forest seemed to welcome us. We went on, without thought, without care, with nothing to feel save the song of our body. We stopped when we felt hunger. We saw birds in the tree branches and flying from under our footsteps. We picked a stone and sent it as an arrow at a bird. It fell before us. We made a fire. We cooked the bird. We ate it. And no meal had ever tasted better to us. And we thought suddenly that there was this great satisfaction to be found in the food which we need and obtain by our own hand and we wished to be hungry again, and soon, that we might know again the strange new pride in eating. Then we walked on, and we came to a stream which lay as a streak of glass among the trees. It lay so still that we saw no water but only a cut in the earth, in which the trees grew down, upturned, and the sky at the bottom. We knelt by the stream, and we bent down to drink. Then we stopped, for upon the blue of the sky below us we saw our own face for the first time. We sat still, and we held our breath, for our face and our body were 
beautiful. Our face was not like the faces of our brothers, for we felt no pity when we looked upon it. Our body was not like the bodies of our brothers, for our limbs were straight and thin and hard and strong. And we thought that we could trust this being who looked upon us from the stream, and that we had nothing to fear from this being. We walked on till the sun had set. When the shadows gathered among the trees, we stopped in a hollow between the roots, where we shall sleep tonight. And suddenly, for the first time, this day, we remembered that we are the damned. We remembered it, and we laughed. We are writing this on the paper we had hidden in our tunic together with the written pages we had brought for the World Council of Scholars, but never given to them. We have much to speak of to ourselves, and we hope we shall find the words for it in the days to come. Now we cannot speak, for we cannot understand. End Chapter 8